that. Sweet Jesus, that ain't good. Spreading out. That's going to keep cracking for two, maybe 3,000 meters. We're going to have to run tight together. Go! Come in, Lucy. You're all going in. There's no time. We're coming. Just hang on. We're talking about a movie called The Ice Road. And um, for, so to get started, for folks who may not be familiar with the terminology, how, how would you describe what an ice road is? Um, it is a snow plowed section of ice um, over, over waterways um, in extreme North America. Right. So there are, there are some in Europe, um, but they're, they're very much um, used in uh, the northern sections of the Canadian provinces. Um, in the Northwest Territories, there's, there's one across Great Slave Lake uh, to reach those, um, a bunch of mines up there. And in Manitoba, there are ones across Lake Winnipeg and Lake Manitoba. Uh -huh. uh, so we, we, we actually she shot Lake the Lake Winnipeg Ice Road as the Lake Winnipeg Ice Road. <laughs> so, it must have been. I, yeah, I saw you shot January and February I think of last year, right? So it must have been freezing up there. Yeah, um, we're used in the states here. We're used to Fahrenheit, um, yep. but this will in centigrade co countries, um, they'll uh, people will understand that there's a convergence point at 42 below, I believe. Yeah. Um, and we were very close to that convergence point on a number of days. We were in around 30 below Fahrenheit. Um, I know one day I went out to scout and it was very close. It was in the mid thirties uh, uh, below uh, Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's it colder, colder, colder than I'd ever experienced. <laughs> and most of the crew and equipment I, I would imagine. So what kind of special needs did you have when, uh, shooting in those conditions? Well, the um, interesting question, because one of the things that favored uh, Winnipeg was that the, was the camera crews, the technical people, um, right. pe people who handle the cameras. They're, they're used to cameras freezing. They know how to prevent cameras from freezing. Um, and that's, that's the, there, there are two main concerns. Uh, freeze ups uh, of your, of your camera equipment, and then also trying to, draw realistic performances from, from actors who have their faces uncovered um, and, and, and you have a very, very short window right. uh, to do before they have to cover up and, and get back in. And that was only um, really a problem on maybe seven or eight days. The, the rest <laughs> of the day, I know it's amazing, but mo most actors can function uh, if it's say 10 below Fahrenheit, 15 below Fahrenheit. But once it pushes up into that range, you, there were a couple of times um, both Lawrence Fishburne and Liam Neeson had a hard time even speaking the lines because their jaws were so stiff. Right. A whole new de definition of freeze frame, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, this is the film you've written and directed it. Uh, you're known mostly as a screenwriter. You've directed a few films before this. So what brought you to the point where you wanted to do both for this particular project? It was, it came um, very gradually. They, I, there was a discussion about making a film with the, uh, uh, where the ice road and the ice road trucking world was the backdrop. Right. And, and what was being discussed, I, I really had no interest in. It was, there were discussions about a horror film and a genre, heavy genre film like that with monsters and all kinds of stuff. And I said, I, I, I don't want to do that. Um, possibly one day, but, but not now. And I, I was a huge admirer. Um, I saw it during my sort of golden window of, of, um, film viewing that's so the cinema paradiso uh era of my life um mm -hmm. i think i was about 10 years old when i saw clouseau's wages of fear and and i always wanted to do a picture you know inspired by that about a dangerous trek on vehicles you know 
and it just it it just clicked. It was something I said, "Hey, I've I've often had my eye on this, but this ice road trucking world provides a a a hor- you know horribly um, dangerous." Right. <clears throat> Je- uh, you know, jeopardy filled world where you can run vehicles that that doesn't that that's that's dissimilar enough from the mountainous terrain and wages of fear that it'll be in, uh, kind of inspired by and not a remake, you know. Yeah. And, and and that's how it all all developed. Yeah. And it's interesting. Uh, the, the ice road itself, especially when it's kind of in a state of flux, shall we say, is almost like a character on its own, uh, it, you know, interacting with the with the folks who are on on the trucks and trying to get where they're trying to get to go to. So, uh, what kind of? Sh- how did you shoot that? I mean, I you know, there are shots from underneath the ice. It looks like the the thing is wobbling back and forth, and it's a massive, you know, big expansive yeah. shot. That that effect, um, the pressure wave effect, yeah. um, uh, is real and. We tried to get our effects house. That's an effect shot, a VFX shot um, done by Mars, uh, Monsters, Aliens, Robots, and Zombies out of Toronto. Mm-hmm. And these are all Canadian guys who work in that effects house. And, right. and, and they have seen vehicles out, out on ice sheets where this effect is actually visible. And, and uh, we tried to get it as dead real as possible, that rippling that happens. And, and what happens is, is the, the, it's a, just a physics engineering issue of this, of the weight of the vehicle pressing down on the ice, which f- pushes the water forward underneath the ice and creates that up, upheaval. It often rebounds against shoreline and then comes back at you. And that's when you plunge through the ice. Right. And, and it's, uh, so if your vehicle go, goes too fast, you deal with a pressure wave. If it goes too slow and you're going along just ploddingly, you can have this. There's lines of dialogue in the film that talk about this. Then the pounds per, per square inch on your tires are too much, particularly when you're outside the safety window, you know, right. late, you know, late in, late in the year. So that's, we tried to have the vehicles kind of boxed in between uh, a situation where they would go too slow and also too fast, um, which we, you know, Right, right. Yeah. Do, do a lot with that in the film, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so in addition to the, the kind of mechanical aspects of it, there's a very human aspect to it as well. And you, you've got some interesting actors. Uh, Liam Neeson, of course, is the, is, the, is the starring guy. And Lawrence Fishburne is in there. Um, and I, I, I read where I think that Liam has decided that this, he's kind of retiring from action films after making this film. So... <laughs> He's, he's, none of us are getting any older or any younger, rather. So, uh, so what? What kind of? Uh, how, how was he to work with on this particular film? Well, it's Liam Neeson. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, he, he's he's one of the great cinema actors of our era, and I mean, you know, he it's he's Oscar Schindler for goodness sakes, and yeah. and um, I was thrilled when he expressed interest in the script and wanted to come come aboard and. And uh, I was dying to work with him. I'm a huge admirer of his. And he, everybody has marveled at his, this new career he's etched out for himself. And it's amazing uh, for someone, particularly his age, to be doing these kind of, of, of film vehicles. Um, so he was, uh, he was just a perfect choice for this. And he was a little bit older, I have to, I have to say, than I imagined when I wrote the script. Right. Um, I didn't write the role for a young, young guy, but I didn't write uh, the role for someone as old as Liam, but Liam's in such remarkably good shape that he could pull it off tremendously. Right, right, right. And there's a couple of kind of uh, subplots. And one of them is the relationship between Liam's character, Mike, and uh, his brother, Gertie, um, who is suffering from some kind of distress syndrome from uh, uh, the Iraq war. So what kind of... What what made you kind of weave that into the, the scheme of things? Um, I, you know, um, that's a good that's a good question as well, and it sort of sort of it sort of um, investigates the the process of writing these pictures. You know, when you're writing particularly action adventure, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find new terrain. You know. Right. That, that new unique character angles um, 
I always loved of mice and men. I think it started there. Ah, uh, yeah. Of a of a of a of one man having to be the caretaker of another man who's mentally impaired. Um, and what Gertie has is a is a syndrome called aphasia. Um, he's had a head wound from the war. And what aphasia does is it knocks out the part of your brain. Um, um, it either destroys it or marginalizes it that controls speech. And so his, his thought processes are unimpaired, but it's the link between his brain and his, and his, uh, his larynx, his, his, uh, his ability to speak, to, to both um, make, create sensible language and interpret sensible language. Um, and I thought that we, Marcus Thomas, the actor who plays um, Gertie and myself and, and um, Al Corley, one of the producers, we spent a good two or three weeks um, researching Wernicke's aphasia. And we spent time with the aphasia sufferers um, uh, group in Los Angeles. And that was enormously beneficial, both to Marcus and myself when I was cleaning up the script. Um, so it, I, I, I I like it. I'm I'm a fan of it. I I think that it worked well in the uh, in the relationship between the two people. And I thought that Marcus and and Liam um, played off, off each other very believably. As right. Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it's interesting. The the group of people who are coming to the rescue um, are all kind of outsiders in their own way, as as Marcus and and Mike are. But also uh, the character Tantu, who's played by Amber. Uh, Mid Thunder, uh, particularly interesting character. So, um, explain how she kind of fits into the mold because she's she's kind of way outside from the others. When I started researching this, because I'd never been to Winnipeg, I've wow. been to I've been to Canada many many times, but I'd never been to Manitoba, and and I found out that the the um, the most um, uh, c- commercially successful ice road trucking company is in Winnipeg. And I started researching Winnipeg uh, because of their tax credit. I thought there was a high likelihood we would shoot in Winnipeg. And then I found out this, this, uh, that, that Manitoba, Southern Manitoba has one of the highest percentages of First Nations population there. And so I, and, and a lot of them are involved in the ice road trucking business. And so I said, well, goodness, you know, it would be stupid not to involve uh, uh, this large percentage of people. Right. Um, you know, I just want to be as realistic as I possibly can, you know, but a lot of the drivers and mechanics and all that are First Nations um, folks. And um, I started crafting the Tantu character um, from that. And what, and what can you tell us about Amber, the actress? She's lovely. Um, she's enormously talented and she's a rising star. And right. I'm, very, I'm very, very proud of Amber. And um, she's professional, prepared, a trooper, never complains, always prepared. Um, and, um, she's really going places. I know she was just cast in the, as the lead in the predator. Um, uh-huh. series. So Amber, Amber is a rising star, wonderful right. actress. So what kind of research did you have to do to kind of understand the, the world of these, these truck drivers? I noticed, you know, little details like the, um, I don't know if they're not bobbleheads, but the uh, figurines on the on the dashboard that kind of bounce around uh, at various points in the in the, in the film, yeah. kind of giving us uh, messages about the the seriousness of how things are going. Um, I heard that as an anecdote from some right. ice truckers, and I, I I liked it so much that I just embraced it and did it. And what it is is a it's a low tech, down and dirty way um, uh, of uh, to detect. Uh, uh, jittery vibration on the ice surface under the tires that it shows up in this little uh, um, reverberation of these bobbleheads. And, and I just thought, it, I thought it was very visual. I yeah. knew I was going to have cameras pointing out the front windshield so they would be constantly visible in the frame. Yeah. And, 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 and the control of the head, the speed of the head was done by me with a little remote control seated okay. directly, directly behind <laughs> Find the actors in the sleep frequencies. Very cool. <laughs> I bet you didn't think you were going to be doing something like that as you were training for your job. <laughs> I, I was terrible at it on the first day, but I got better. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> That's usually how things go. <laughs> um, and, and there's music is involved a, a bit in the film. Obviously, with truckers, they're listening to something as they're driving, and 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 there's soundtrack music. Uh, how involved were you with the, the music selection? Oh, this is a wonderful part of the whole story. My friend Mark Colley, um, who had a, a big pe- period of stardom in the '90s and has now having this big comeback record now um, uh, in Nashville. He came up, I was gonna shoot some videos of him with his new songs. And he had this idea, he, we all had dinner, Mark, Collie, myself, and um, Al Corley and Bart Rosenblatt, the producers. And, and Mark suggested the idea, said, hey, you know what would be cool for this movie is to have the old Nashville trucking standards, the old songs recorded by new artists. Right. And, and everybody loved the idea and they pitched it back in Nashville and Scott Borchetta of Big Machine Records said, yeah, hell yeah, and came aboard. And all of a sudden, just in the blink of an eye, we've got um, the Hollywood Rats doing the cover of Johnny Cash's I've Been Everywhere, right. got Miranda Lambert, Jason Isbell, Tim McGraw, Luke Combs. So uh, we're, we're very, very happy about how that all came about just out of nothing um it, it's really been a thrill to be part of them and it's not just country guys i mean the la rats is nikki six and rob zombie <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it's awesome very cool uh so the, so the film is about to be released uh i believe in your neck of the woods uh, very soon in our neck of the woods just a short time afterwards so um what's the vibe like as far as people going to the cinemas these days Well, the producers had to make this um, really tough choice when they were selling the film. And when they were when they were selling the film, you know, we had multiple buyers interested. We had, I think, I think, goodness, six or seven interested buyers. Right. And some of the deals in the offing were for theatrical release. And so the producers had to make this choice. Do we risk it not knowing that there could be new covid variants or another new lockdown or whatever? And. And Netflix came in with a really wonderful offer to just snap up all the rights for North America. And it was, uh, um, it was uh, 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 an offer that couldn't be refused, really. And, it, and the producers took it. And so Netflix gets North America and the rest of the world gets what looks like a pretty healthy theatrical distribution. So I don't know, for me, um, this is my first streaming premiere. Right. Um, First movie that I've been involved in that's going to go out streaming in North America. Yep. Um, so, so I get my feet wet doing that. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll fly to Germany or Switzerland and watch the film with Marcus Thomas. Mar- Marcus lives in Switzerland. So right, I, right. I know he's going to go to the theater in, in, uh, in uh, I believe, Zurich, I think. Yeah. So. Well, it's interesting because people have to rethink their cinematic experience because of COVID and all this stuff. I say, for, especially for a film like this, just make sure you buy a subwoofer for your home system and you're all set to go. <laughs> because all that rumbling and ice, <laughs> you get, you need to feel it. Cheers. I'm, I'm, I, that, I'm really glad you say that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with this, the, um, the sound effects, the special sound effects. And, and uh, they did a good job on that. And, right. and uh, it really adds to the film. And, and uh, yeah, it was, um, you know, when you're out there on a real frozen lake, you know, with real... Um, you know, multi-ton 18 wheelers and you hear the ice crack, you hear yeah. six feet of ice crack, it goes off like a gunshot and yeah. it's, ter- it's terrifying. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, have you got other plans? What, what's next for you? Um, I'm working on a TV show. Uh, I'm working on two feature film scripts. Um, I, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've been, I've had lots of different business entrepreneurial things that have right. taken me to Las Vegas. And one of which is smoke wagon bourbon. Um, there's, there's a product placement when Liam's in the gas station, he sees a truck. I, see that yet. I did my own product placement on that. <laughs> I, I, I've got a, I've got a, a really rising successful liquor company here in Las Vegas. So I've been doing that, but I, I, the ice road is really um, kind of, uh, put wind in my sails. I, I feel, I feel, I don't know, young again in, in cinema. I feel like making a lot more films and I've, I've had a, a whole number of, of new opportunities so, that I'm very, very grateful for. So 
Um, I, I think I'm going to be making more films soon. Cool, cool. Well, good luck with this one. You know, come on down to New Zealand. You can watch it in the cinema here if you want. <laughs> a- absolutely. I'd love to. I, I haven't been back. I, you know, I, I've only been to New Zealand once and, and um, I spent more time in, uh, in Australia. Right. Um, um, but I'd love to. I, I'm dying to go back, in fact. Very cool. Well, thank you for talking to me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cheers. It's been my pleasure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye-bye.